So then we have this uh, little incident. I believe this happened today, but I could be wrong. And you just, yeah. You don't even really need much to talk about because you see what it is. It is what it is. Uh, it's odd that not, not a lot of people really step in to stop this. It's kind of crazy. Like, wow, somebody tries to step in and then he gets pushed back. It's all kind of just insane. Just some immaturity. Look at this first sucker punch. I'm just going to assume because he's not wearing a mask and everybody else is wearing masks and bandanas that, you know, you can kind of figure out who's on which whatever side and whatever the fuck you think this side game is. But sucker punch. Damn. And he had his, his fist wrapped up like he was ready to go. That is cheap. That is dishonorable. You have brought shame to your family. There's no honor in a sucker punch like that. Like, especially if you're looking for optics. Whatever it was this was all about, you just lost this guy. But we'll move on because, again, it's crazy that somebody getting sucker punched at a rally like this isn't breaking news of any kind. So we got Boeing CEO pledges a 20% increase in black employees. I don't know why it matters. I, I feel like Boeing should just focus on a 20% increase in flight safety. 20% increase in perhaps uh, leg room would be a lot more appreciated. I don't think forced diversity uh, really helps anyone, including minorities that it's supposedly supposed to help. I think that everybody should just be treated equally and that you will get judged based on you know how well you do your job. How well, how good are you at it? There's there's really just no reason aside from virtue signaling. I guess if Boeing wants to get some clout, I think Boeing's not doing too hot. In, in my opinion, I think we should just move on from planes and get to Vimanas already. Use some anti aircraft, but Elon Mu or anti gravity aircraft. But Elon Musk is too busy doing some weird shit with with pigs and Neuralink and. Don't you want to plug your brain into your phone? Like, no, bro, I want to fucking fly in a spaceship that doesn't use gas. That's what I want to do. But I guess the Tesla is a pretty cool car. Also, shout out the original Nikola Tesla. Read his autobiography. That guy was incredibly based and was on, like, another wavelength. Nikola Tesla understood a lot about the world. And, and Elon Musk doesn't really do enough, in my opinion, to, like... Uh, advocate or like promote or honor Nikola Tesla I mean he has he sells electric cars and he calls a Tesla but maybe he could like start a museum or something I don't know maybe he has I don't know I just think that it's a bit sus so there's a new Tom Clancy game and it's about fighting a terrorist group who are manipulating protesters to generate global unrest interesting symbol they've chosen to represent these terrorists and here you have that fisty symbol which is also it's a it's a, like an old Antifa symbol as well. It's been around for a while, but it is currently the Black Lives Matter symbol. It's the sim universal symbol of solidarity. It's a pretty bad idea to use that symbol to represent the bad guys at this particular point in human history. <laughs> Tom Clancy base as fuck. Is that what it, is that what we're looking at? New Tom Clancy game. I haven't played a Tom Clancy game since Rainbow Six on like. Nintendo 64 and I have rose tinted glasses I'm pretty sure that game looks awful if I were to go back and look at it well this is interesting this combined with the Cold War game with the Call of Duty it seems as if uh, in general companies are waking up to the go woke go broke we even have a Disney story somewhere in here where there's rumors that Disney is about to you know pull back on the whole woke agenda because they probably noticed like oh shit despite all the loudest people being woke the majority of people who actually pay money to see this kind of shit they they don't appreciate like that kind of radicalizing politics in their escapism media it's just it makes sense so again you know this is the <laughs> the universal symbol of solidarity this is the interesting symbol they've chosen to represent those terrorists here you go. This this just speaks volumes. Yeah. Like way to ruin a good symbol too. Like look at all these people yelling at this lady. I don't know why they're yelling at her. She's also wearing a mask. I guess it's because she's not wearing black. This kid couldn't find just a plain black t shirt, so he had whatever this symbol is. Uh, I don't know. I just think this is obnoxious. 
I'm sure lots of people find this behavior cringy. Are these people gonna like look back just like the hippies did? Look back at like their old videos when they have documentaries on Wood Woodstock and they see like, oh shit. There I was getting a blumpkin in a in a porta potty. Oh fuck. I was getting Oh shit. <laughs> and they look back and they're just like, damn, I wish people would forget about that. Unfortunately nowadays we have Facebook and social media and there's a there's likely a large record of all the shit that we've all done throughout our past and that sucks a bit I think humans should be allowed to make mistakes and to grow and to change their minds especially young humans young humans make mistakes all the time that's kind of the point of being human but let's move on to the next one we got oh yeah we have a uh, okay so ASU student group College Republicans United is raising funds for Kenosha protest shooter Kyle Rittenhouse the group told an AZ Central reporter they do not speak to journalists with pronouns on their Twitter page and to get a real job. Damn. <laughs> oh, shit. They do not speak to journalists with pronouns on their Twitter page. You know, if you see somebody who has pronouns in their profile, it is, it, it's a telling sign. It's pretty obnoxious. It's because they're basically demanding that you approach them in a specific way. And anyone who's probably been, you know, overseas, international, and you've been to another country and had to deal with their customs, you probably are aware that, like, demanding that, that somebody else treats you exactly the way that you want to be treated 100% and, and how they introduce themselves and all that shit, how they address you, it's, it's, uh, it's retarded. It's not going to work. Aside from like language barriers of internationalness, uh, just the idea, it's a, it's a red flag for sure. If you see a reporter or a journalist that does that, it's very virtue signal. So then we have, uh, this sort of thing will make me steer my kids away from applying to ASU when college comes around. And then Arizona State University responds, While there is no policy prohibiting student groups from raising funds for a cause such as this, ASU does not endorse or support this effort. ASU will be meeting with this student group to learn more about this decision. Now, I hope they don't shut it down. Uh, apparently a lot of colleges apparently are just massive indoctrination mills, diploma mills for for-profit industries that also just kind of radicalize students and I mean if you've seen about Evergreen and uh, you know if you've heard about Jordan Peterson at all and you've probably seen these obnoxious levels of radicalization that go on at college campuses. So we'll move on. Uh, this is the Telegraph. I think you have to pay to, ha to read it. I don't have a subscription, but we do have this. This is yesterday. The Telegraph. Pelletophiles using cheese and pizza emojis as secret code on social media. Oh shit, you don't say. That's very astute of you, The Telegraph. Welcome to the party. For everybody else who's had their tests flipped over and have been waiting for the rest of the class to catch up, this is old news. But I thought this was just a conspiracy theory. I thought this wasn't real. But, you know, I don't know. Maybe it isn't real. Who, who the fuck knows anymore? We were learning a lot about child safety, child trafficking, human trafficking. And it appears to be pretty real. Uh, I don't, I don't want to say I have schizophrenia or paranoia, but I feel like... The information that I've been led to, that I've found about child trafficking is real. It is in fact real. And that yes, they do use cheese and pizza emojis as secret code on social media. Just look at Chrissy Teigen's uh, Twitter. That shit was super crazy before she got, she started mass deleting all that stuff. It's wild. Just absolutely wild. So shout out Pizzagate. In my opinion, Pizzagate is very much a real theory or it's I would say that it hasn't been debunked. And the fact that the media comes out and tells you that, one, it's illegal for you to read these uh, leaked emails from Hillary, and, but the media can do it because there's different laws, different rules, like that alone is a lie. And it's very telling that the media would come out in full force and try to tell you that Pizzagate has already been debunked. It's not real. but And you shouldn't even look into it. And if you do, it's illegal. Nah, I don't know. I don't know. There's just some weird emails in that. To say that it's completely debunked is like not very uh, genuine. We also have another telegraph. 
Exclusive. British Library's chief librarian claims racism is the creation of white people. Well, gosh darn, Jilly, would you cut the malarkey? I didn't know white people just went and invented everything like this. Everything bad in the world it was invented by white people. God damn white people. They just can't. They just can't. They can't put their minds to anything without deciding to just divide everyone into groups and then to judge them on it. Her name is Liz Jolly. Liz Jolly supports changes to displays and collections in the wake. I mean, Liz Jolly could also be a, a library. I mean, uh, you know, uh, Britain is pretty weird with their naming, so I don't know who Liz Jolly is. But there's a library. Supports changes to displays and collections in the wake of Black Lives Matter protests to purge perceived racism at the library. Now, why do you have to word it like that? Why is it perceived racism? That almost implies that, like, it's not real racism, it's just being perceived that way. Isn't the point of a library to help educate people? You know, because people start with preconceived notions, their own perceptions, and then maybe they read a book and get information, and then that changes their mind? I don't, I don't know. But again, you gotta read it, you gotta pay to read it, I don't wanna pay to read it, but it is an interesting headline. But I, I believe they've also said uh, maps, old maps, old timey books and stuff like that they're going to get rid of. And that, I mean, like the, the far left crazy conspiracy theorist in my mind is like, ah, oh, you guys just want to cover up mud flood. Because there's probably some old maps in there that talk about like Chicago being a city called Shilaga before like Col Christopher Columbus ever came over and it had skyscrapers, supposedly. Mud flood is a very interesting theory. If you want to hear about Mud Flood, put it in the comments, and if, if enough people talk about it, I, I'll probably make that one really quickly, because it's one of my favorite topics, Mud Flood. If you don't know what Mud Flood is, it's the theory that there, at one point in history, there used to be more modern buildings. Or, uh, a lot of the buildings that you see in a lot of these major cities have existed there for a lot longer, and there was once a, a flood of like water and mud that sank a lot of them or buried them, and then a lot of settlers and uh, colon colonials col colonists yeah pioneers they actually dug them out like in San Francisco Utah Chicago they actually dug out a lot of these buildings and if you go to any 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 town really like even my small town up in Indiana out in the up, out in the boonies there's a small town there and you can see there's definitely certain buildings that look way older than all the other buildings and you notice that if you look at the ground level a lot of them have weird streets at angles where the windows come up like this and it's, it just looks so weird like why would anybody build it like that with a window halfway in halfway out so yeah I mean there's lots of theories around that but I just wanted to digress there for a moment so what else, what else we got we got all right, here's the Disney rumor my feeling is Disney remains committed to woke principles, but if this rumor is true, they are no longer going to prioritize agenda over profit and are not going to allow employees to attack and insult fans. I think that's the takeaway, but only time will tell if this is true. Here, you know, every now and then people say like, you know, greed is the biggest problem in the world, but maybe sometimes, you know, greed helps us out. Sometimes, in an effort to make more money, Disney and these giant corporations can realize like oh maybe we shouldn't insult our fans maybe we shouldn't attack them and degrade their sense of intelligence perhaps now I'm not saying greed is good by any means I'm just saying you know thank you in this instance hopefully they'll make better shit they haven't made good shit in a while they are so lazy over at Disney the fact that they're remaking Mulan I'm surprised that they remade Mulan and didn't replace everybody with black characters <laughs> Because every other story they replay, they, they remake, and then they just replace it with a whole all-black cast. So, like, Lion King, I was excited to see the remake of Lion King, but I didn't realize it was literally a remake. Like, literally scene for scene, word for word, everything the same. It made me fall asleep. It, it loses the magic of the initial, the original Lion King, because the original Lion King is a masterpiece of animation. It's breathtaking. It looks like a painting that's moving. The new one just looks so grungy and just like, ah. Uh, not really interested yeah but whatever alright then we're gonna we're gonna drop this little bomby now I don't really I don't really like Info or Infowars or uh, Alex Jones I don't like using him as a source by any means I just figured I would throw this out there 
Because Alex Jones is talking about the Pentagon exposing a Democratic coup plot against Trump. Now, of course, you look through this, there's no links, necessarily, to any of this shit. I mean, there is this, but it's just another news article. And again, you gotta pay for it. But it says, Trump could lose and not leave, but cabinet members who try to help face prison. And here's the same article I found on, on Reddit. You gotta be able to use as many different websites as you can, even if you don't agree with them. I think Reddit is a cesspool of anti-American propaganda. However, they can't control everything, so there are pockets of good information you can find there. But we'll just uh, watch this one little section right here, because it is kind of funny, and it does explain a little bit. Now, this has already been in the CFR, Foreign Affairs, this plan. He was just saying this because that's their plan. He didn't just say this on top of said he's a puppet. I promise you, I absolutely convinced they will escort him from the White House. The great the bus is back. Biden said, referring to the U.S. military Joint Chiefs of Staff, Esper in a crisis management mode amongst turmoil Trump's re-election campaign. Other high-profile Democrats, including the party's 2016 nominee Hillary Clinton, have also speculated that Trump might be unlikely to leave office willingly in the event of disputed election results. Well, yeah, if there's a disputed election result, he's going to dispute it. So, again, they're saying they're going to dispute no matter what, because they're going to lose. But if he disputes their dispute, military takes him out. So that basically sums it up. Alex Jones made it into a, a two-hour long segment. <laughs> if you want to watch that, you can find it on InfoWars, but uh, I'm, I really think that's like the most important part of the whole video. That just summarizes it. They're also saying the Democrats are going to announce COVID-19 checkpoints as the pretext to impose medical martial law on the population. Now, people like uh, Alex Jones... While he may be right from time to time, I mean, he, they were turning the frogs gay. That, that's a fact. They were. There's a lot of people out there that profit off of sensationalism. And I think Alex Jones is probably the poster child of that. So I'm not saying that he's wrong. I'm just saying that he likes to, whatever the worst case scenario possibly could be, he's going to talk about that. So we have that. We got that. And then we're going to wrap this up with Anonymous coming out on Twitter saying... We've seen enough. Now, there's this. I mean, there's so many different anonymous accounts, but this one's latest and non-news. Uh, 340,000 followers. Pretty big anonymous account. We've seen enough. Anonymous will begin launching attacks against far-right extremists, fascists, and white supremacists once again. Expect us. And then we got a base comment. Let's check out this base reply. What about the far-left extremists, which are a much bigger threat to our society right now? Good question. Uh, well, do we got a reply? Ah, uh, they didn't reply. Yeah, so I don't believe this is the actual anonymous. It's hard to say, like, when you create a group called anonymous, and we don't have any name, we have no leaders, no organization, and you don't claim it, like, anyone can claim it. Just like Satoshi Nakamoto, so many people have claimed to be him, to be Q, lots of people have claimed to be Q. But yeah, it, it I don't know, I think this is crazy. Like, how is Twitter allowing this? This seems like an actual threat. <laughs> but Twitter does what Twitter wants to do. I believe uh, Ann Coulter recently came out and said, and I don't really know much about Ann Coulter. I think some people really don't like her. I just don't know anything about her. But she said that she wanted someone like, like Kyle Rittenhouse for president, and Twitter came and uh, blocked that and censored that. And so basically Twitter has already decided how it feels about uh, Kyle Rittenhouse in that case. And if you go against what they think, you'll likely be blocked or banned. So shout out to Parler, which is another, it's a, it's a more of a conservative version of Twitter some people are using. Uh, I have an account, I don't really use it that much, but I just figured I'd throw that out there. If you know of any better, more based uh, social media account or places, platforms that you could use, by all means, let me know. I think there's a shift happening. I'm going to throw out, this is my like two cents on what I've just, the prophecy. This is, this is the prophecy. The prophecy that I've had for at least the past two years. There is something that I call the paradigm shift, and it is happening. And it is, it is destined to happen, it's inevitable. And there's two parts to it. There's something called the paradigm shift, and then there's something I call the second renaissance. So the paradigm shift is basically this. This push that we've seen in the last 10 years, maybe 15, even more, towards leftist 
I ideas, ideology, this woke agenda. It's like a woke cult where you have to agree with them. And if you don't, you're a bigot, you're an evil person. What that's doing, pushing all the way so hard to the liberal side is it's, it's creating a vacuum of content. And the vacuum of content, it, it's going to, it's inevitable that it's going to be filled with conservative and more, you know, based leaning, maybe more open-ended leaning uh, content and content creators. So we're already seeing this happen. We've already seen a lot of celebrities with Hollywood kind of shut down, with the NBA sort of shut down, a lot of major sports losing a lot of, of viewers, lots of them, because of they're going woke, go woke, go broke. And w there's lots of different angles of why it would happen. Like I said with Disney, like Disney wants money. So if Disney wants money, they're going to realize like, oh shit, we can't polarize everybody so hard. Maybe we got to get some of these directors, like the director of uh, Star Wars, the new sequel trilogy, the, especially, especially the second two, like Kathy or something like that. Like she fucked everything up. She didn't let any of the actors have, like, a, an opinion over what their characters would do and what they would actually say. Like, she didn't let Mark Hamill have any input over what Luke would actually be like. Like, what would Luke actually do in this situation? Maybe let the guy who played Luke Skywalker in the original Star Wars, he probably has an idea. He's played him numerous times in many different cases. He probably knows what Luke would have done. But no, they wanted to push this agenda, this stupid... <laughs> You could, you could go to town on those movies and why they're just awful movies, awful storytelling. But it's mostly because of this weird agenda pushing. And the paradigm shift talks about like, you know, like directors and producers, or more so the direct, the creative heads of these places. They're no longer going to be in as much of a position of power as they used to be. And they'll be looking for new 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 blood i guess if you will like the hollywood loves new blood you know what i'm saying they'd be looking for it so like the world also hollywood itself is no longer going to be just like the central hub as the years progress it becomes easier and easier as technology grows for people regular people to create content and create movies and stuff like that that people actually enjoy and producers are going to start realizing independent producers that oh wow uh, i don't it's not a good investment to invest in that anymore and maybe I'll start investing in more riskier projects so we, we don't have so many remakes and sequels. Perhaps somebody will take more of a risk with original ideas, original content. They don't have to dumb everything down just to sell it in China. So yeah, that about wraps up today's uh, Clown World News Roundup. I should mention though about the, the second renaissance. So once the paradigm shift happens and we've dealt with a lot of this bullshit like the cabal as much as you can drain the swamp all that noise then there will be something that i believe called the second renaissance which it will last for about 200 to 300 years of prosperity and peace and everything's gonna be awesome because you know like hard times create strong men strong men create good times good times create weak men weak men create hard times so we we've had the the good times you know in the 80s 90s and whatnot and we're we're now entering the hard times or we we've been in the hard times that's created a lot of strong men and they're getting ready to pull us back into good times and when we're in the good times it'll last for at least a generation or two before you know the third or fourth generation just starts to get complacent in their position so hopefully we can have this second renaissance that i dream of it would be beautiful it'd be awesome Lots of art, lots of prosperity, a lot of international collaboration. Like, everybody's afraid of the, the NWO, the New World Order, the One World Government, but I think, like, a One World Society, at the very least, run by the people, would be beautiful. So let me know what you thought about all these stories. If you if you enjoy uh, Clown World News and independent journalism like this, you can check out my info. I have a Patreon. You can support it. Shout out to all the people in the Patreon who do support it currently, internally eternally grateful and uh yeah call your mom be a good person stay vigilant uh it's a lot of bullshit news out there look for sources look for links check multiple websites do what you got to do be strong peace